This week on KCAP, we have a recap on the bonfire from last Thursday. Reporter Sean Neptune interviewed four new exchange students. There's also coverage on sports that went down this week on Gabe's Game Recap and Dropping Dimes with Trey and Andrew. I'm Reagan Williams. And I'm Emma Seville. And, and KCAT News starts right now. Caleb Perkins is going to start us off by giving us a recap on the bonfire that took place last Thursday. The bonfires last Thursday night. It started here at Lau Couch Stadium with games including sack race, three-legged race, weirball race, and tug of war, which the juniors won. All the games were planned by Stuco and were worth MVC points, which were sitting at freshmen at 20, sophomores with 15, juniors with 10, and seniors at the top with 25. After the games, the drum line led all the classes to the baseball field, where the bonfire took place. The drumline then did a performance with their light-up six. Then the fire went up in flames, and as the flames went up, the cheerleaders led us in some chants. After the chants, senior Jarrett Plummer threw the Andale dummy into the flames. As the fire was roaring, Miss Jessup started to fire dance with some of her daring acts. The fire then started to die down with the night ending with the classes singing the alma mater. I caught up with some of the students at the bonfire to th talk about their experiences. You were the person that threw in the Andale dummy last week at the bonfire, right? Correct. All right. So how did it feel? Uh, it felt great. Great? That's yeah. it? Just great? Yes. That's right? Yeah. Did you think, like, what do you think the intensity level of the bonfire this year was? Oh, I loved it. I used all the time. Yeah? Yeah. And then uh, last question was, uh, was this your uh, best bonfire yet? Oh, by far. By yeah? Far. All four years. Yeah? All right. Cool. Thanks. Uh, how did the bonfire go? Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was fun seeing everyone get along, start singing, chanting, yelling, watching everyone beat and burn Andale. And uh, how do you think the games were? What? The games? How do you think the games were? Um, they were really good, except for the tug war. It was a little unfair, but other than that, I thought it was, they were really fun. Why was it unfair? Because seniors are always bigger and stronger than the freshmen. I think, all in all, you could say this bonfire was pretty lit. Kayla Perkins, KCAT News. At MHS this year, we have four brand new exchange students from around the world. Sean Neptune will be giving us the information about them. With four new foreign exchange students coming here to MHS from Lithuania, Spain, Somaliland, and Nigeria, we took the time out to find out how their experience here at MHS is going. My name is, well, my name is Khadija Kiwa. That's what and my friends call me Kewa, so if you can pronounce the Khadija, Kewa is much more easier to say. I'm from Nigeria. Nigeria is located in West, West Africa. Uh, my name is Suhei. It's kind of it's Kewa. And my nickname is Zeb. And sign is I am not in my country, I prefer Zeb. I'm from Somaliland. But officially, Somalia is not a country, so but on the map, I am from Somalia. Um, so my name is Emilia. Um, in Lithuanian, we pronounce it Emilia, and I go by Emma or Emily. Either is fine. So I am from Lithuania, which is in Europe. It is actually the geographical center of Europe. My name is Alicia. I pronounce Alicia, but here the people call me Alicia. <laughs> I'm from Spain, from the north of Spain, yes. Um, well, I think the most popular city is the capital, which is Vilnius, and people usually visit the old town, which has really beautiful architecture. Okay, uh, Madrid and Barcelona are the most commune cities, but my, my, my city is also very beautiful, so you might come. <laughs> A lot of different. Yeah. And the food, culture. Uh, system like I think there is no similarity <laughs> all of them are so different you got and I noticed one thing you guys don't eat spicy food because I've been to restaurant and they were like they are giving me the spicier sauce and I just can't feel a thing it's like just normal salt to me but 
In Nigeria, we eat a lot of spice. The school, mm, the sports. I mean, you do all the sports with the high school. There, we, we don't do with the high school. I mean, we have to go outside the high school. So there are a lot of differences between the two cultures. Um, the school is different. The foods are different. People in general are different. The buildings and the streets are different. You could say, like, the trees look different here. Um, but, yeah, I'm learning to adjust. <laughs> but I stay with the Conrad family. Um, um, I live with Sam Conrad, uh, Ethan Conrad, and Emerson Warner. And My family families good. We, we get understand each other very well. So, I think so far it's so good. I'm enjoying. I'm with Kendra Bansett. Do you know her? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have two siblings that are really fun. So, I like my family. They do a lot of things and I don't know. I'm really happy with them. It could be hard for anyone to move towns, let alone countries. But as for these students here at MHS, they have seemed to adjusted fine. Sean Neptune, KCAT News. Thanks, Reagan. The Varsity Boys soccer team played their first game in the Arc City Tournament on September 4th. <laughs> the Cats fell to Arc City Bulldogs 6-0, moving their season to 1-1. One one. Yesterday, September 6th, they played the Augusta Orioles, but we will have those results for you next week. The cross-country team had their first meet in Clearwater on August 30th. In the freshman sophomore boys' two-mile, Donovan Malone placed 15th. And Victor Salazar not too far behind in 17th. <laughs> Anna Moon placed 2nd. And Kaylin Frieden placed 10th in the freshman sophomore girls' two-mile. Then as we head over to the junior-senior boys' two-mile, it was Ryan Roderick who led the Cats in 5th place, with John Thorson right behind him in 8th place. And Josie Russell finished in 5th in the junior-senior girls' two-mile. On August 17th, the varsity girls' golf team was in action in Derby at a nine-hole tournament. Taylor Ingram shot a 63, Maddie Ewan shot a 65, and Shira Herman shot a 68. On September 4th, the volleyball teams were in action against Augusta and Bueller. The Cats fell to the Crusaders two sets to zero, and they also fell to the Orioles two sets to zero. The varsity football team hosted the Andale Indians for the first game of the season. The Cats couldn't keep up as Andale won 42 to 14, but the touchdowns came from Jacob Walker, who caught a pass by Tab Creekmore, and then the other touchdown came from Cole Diffenbaugh. However, the JV team did end up winning 26 to 12. Tonight, the Cats are looking to bounce back against Clearwater. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. That's it for this week's edition of Gabe's Game Recap. Gabe Daniel, KCAT News. On Dropping Dimes, Trey and Andrew will test your knowledge of college mascots and keep dropping those dimes. Welcome back to another edition of Dropping Dimes. We will be testing the student body's knowledge on mascots. Drip, 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 drop, drip, drip, drop. Dropping dimes, dropping dimes, dropping dimes, dropping dimes. Dropping dimes everywhere, like I just don't care. For a dime today, can you tell me who Notre Dame's mascot is? Fighting Irish. Fighting Irish, congratulations, he has won one dime today. Who is Notre Dame's mascot? Like, isn't it some Irish dude? Some Irish dude, that's close, but I gotta have a name. It's an Irish dude. That's not close enough, come on, I'll give you one more shot, you are so close. Boxing. I don't know. That's your hint, boxing. Fighting Irish. Congratulations! With that hint, you have won a dime today. Yes, yeah, kill me. Can you tell me who Notre Dame's mascot is? It's the Irish dude. Irish dude, that's close. I'll give you a hint. Boxing. It's the fighting Irish. There we go. We have a winner. And by the way, if you ever want to donate dimes to Dropping Dimes, just drop them off in Abasolo's room. Do you know who Notre Dame's mascot is? They're the Fighting Irish. The Fighting Irish. Congratulations, you've won 10 cents. All right. Can you tell me who Notre Dame's mascot is? Fighting Irish. Correct. You have won 10 cents today. Thank you. Who is Notre Dame's mascot? The, the, Ir the Irish. Close. I need a little bit more than that. Oh, my God. The Notre Dame. Come on, Coffee. Help him out. 
the. No, say it, coffee. The Fighting Irish. There you go. You have both won a dime today. Would you like to donate your dime for a great cause of dropping dimes? Then just come to Abba Solo's room and drop those dimes. Okay. University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Do you know who they are? Yeah. Virginia. You don't know who they are. They upset. No. No. And that's not my question. I'm just saying they upset Virginia. What is their what is their mascot? I don't know. Okay, so if you went to Baltimore County in Maryland, uh -huh. you would find a lot of these. Close. It's a, it's, a it's a dog. What is your last chance? I don't know. It's a retriever. That's it's close. Pretty close. Good job. Who did Virginia get upset by this year? <laughs> UMBC. Okay, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Okay, what is their mascot? Okay, so if you went to okay, you went to Maryland, into Baltimore County, you find a lot of these. Okay, it's a dog. A bulldog. No. No. Yeah, okay, I'll try, one, more one more try. You got this. Uh, He's not a poodle. Retriever. Good job. Hey, nice try. Who did Virginia get upset by this year in men's? Okay, it's UMBC. Okay, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. What is their mascot? <laughs> okay, it's a dog. It's a type of dog. You get two chances at this. Okay, everybody says that, but it's another. Okay, you get, okay it's another type of dog. Retrievers. It was retrievers. Nice try. Nice try. You still got 10 cents so far. Virginia got upset by a 16 seed this year, yes? Yeah. By who? UMBC. Okay. University of Maryland, Baltimore County. What is their mascot? They are the... Uh-oh. Something dogs? Hey, you got the dogs. It's a dog. It's a dog. Two shots. Two shots. The retrievers. Holy hey, cow! First one, first one, 20 cents. He got it! 20 cents. There we go. Virginia and UMBC played this season in the uh, NCAA tournament, yes? Yes. Can you tell me who the University of Maryland Baltimore County's mascot is? I cannot. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's a dog. Wolf. Close, close. Bulldog. Close. No, it's a retriever. Unfortunately, it's a retriever. you were close on that. You were close on that, but Good job. you got 10 cents. Who did Virginia get upset by this this year in the uh, close basketball tournament? Uh, Villanova. Okay, it's, it's, it's UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. 16 seed, okay? Okay. okay. Who's their mascot? It's a dog. Bulldogs. Close. Nope. The Pugs. Nope. nope. Unfortunately, retrievers. it was retrievers. the Golden Retrievers. Jeez. Mulvane's mascot is? The Wildcat. All right, what's the mascot's name? Victory. Congratulations, you've won 20 cents today. Thanks for playing. Can you tell me who? Mulvane's mascot is. You. True. That might be true, but what is the mascot's name? Wildcat. Close. Now the full name. I don't know. You have no idea? No. All right. Well, I'll give you one more shot. I don't know. His name is Victor E. Wildcat. I knew that. You did? I did. Then why didn't you say it? Because I didn't want 20 cents. You didn't want 20 sets. Thanks for playing, Michael. He's a liar. Can you tell me who Mulvane's mascot is? The Wildcat. What's the Wildcat's name? Victor E. Wildcat. Victor E. Wildcat. You are correct. And today you've won 20 cents. But I think you're going to nail this one right here. Right. Can you tell me Mulvane's mascot's name? Victory Wildcat. Victory Wildcat, congratulations. Right. You have won 20 cents today. Hey guys, thank of course. You. And I think we're going to have a perfect winner for the first time on Dropping Dimes today. Can you tell me who Mulvane's mascot is? Andrew Burgos. That is true, but what's his name? Victor E. Wildcat. Victory Wildcat is correct. And for the first time in Dropping Dimes history, we have someone that corrected all three questions. Money. You know what, Perk? I'll give one to you. <laughs> oh, you gave one to Perkins. One to Chayton. And one to you, Andrew. Yeah, boy. <sighs> All right. For 20 cents today. You got this one, guys. This one's easy. Mulvane's mascot is? Wildcats. What's the mascot's name? Uh, uh, Victory. 
Yeah, because that's you. That is me, and it is Victory Wildcat. Congratulations, you both have won 20 cents oh today. Well, Trey, I'm super excited that they know who the Mulvane mascot was. They didn't know the uh, most obvious of all, the uh, UMBC Retrievers. Well, that concludes this episode of Dropping Dimes. Drip, 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 drop, drip, drip, drop. Dropping dimes, dropping dimes, dropping dimes, dropping dimes. Dropping dimes everywhere, like I just don't care. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on post notifications, where reporter Kayla Perkins will be live streaming the football game against Clearwater for the FCC LA Cancer Awareness Night. Next week, varsity football will be on the road to Collegiate on Friday. Volleyball will have their first home match of the season on Tuesday. And auditions for White Christmas are next Thursday and Friday, September 13th and 14th. That's it for this week's episode of KCAP. Okay, we're going to do a thanks for watching KCAC. Oh, no. oh,